Well, today is a video I thought I would never make because I am selling the best car in the history of the world. I truly do believe that statement and in this video I'm going to explain to you why and talk to you about how you can own this very peachy Mercedes-Benz 300D. So a little bit of background. This is called the W123. It's an era of Mercedes sold from the mid 70s through the mid 80s and they are iconic for being some of the longest lived vehicles in history. And I bought this one about two and a half years ago. It's one of the longest I've actually owned a car with the intention of never, ever, ever, ever selling it. And yet here we are. And to be honest with you, the ownership experience has been everything and more than I could have ever expected, but it's time to move it on to a new home. You see, I feel like I've done everything I can with this car. I've really enjoyed it to its fullest extent. Um, and now it's time to move on to bigger and better and greater horizons. I had this realization that even though the idea of keeping a car forever is cool on paper, in reality, you want to move on to new things and experience what the automotive world has to offer, which is why one of you could own my 123 Mercedes. So let's talk about it, starting with what powers these sedans. So this is kind of the predecessor to the E-Class Mercedes, um, and they were sold with a huge number of engines. But here in the US, you primarily see them with diesel power. So there was like the 240D, which was a four-cylinder diesel. There was a 300D, which was a five-cylinder diesel. And then this was the most powerful, the 300D turbo diesel. So as the name suggests, three liter, five-cylinder turbocharged diesel engine. And this is really what cemented these vehicles reputation for lasting an eternity. Very, very well built engines, not particularly quick by any sense of the imagination, only about 120 horsepower, but truly is an amazing engine. So I hope to give you kind of a sense of the condition of this car. If you're seriously interested in bidding on it, it's up for auction right now over at Bring a Trailer, link in the description below. Um, I think that this engine runs beautifully. Of course, it does sound like a John Deere tractor because that's just how they built them back in the day. But listen to this startup. Listen to how satisfying this is. So key in the ignition. Blow the plug for a hot sec. And then turn it over. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> I think it's one of the coolest parts about owning these cars is yes, they're Mercedes and super elegant, but listen to the rattle they make. It sounds like an old school diesel Cummins. Now you want to check the blow by on these engines. So turn the little oil cap. Sometimes when it's really bad, they'll actually fly off altogether. That one's doing pretty good though. All right, let's close it up and talk about the rest of the car. Now from a design standpoint, very simple three box lines. And I think it's one of the reasons that these cars are so popular. Uh, they just have an iconic old school design, super long hood. This one of course does have the American style bumpers on the front of it, uh, but very clean, very elegant. So many modern cars now are over designed with crazy shapes and angles and just absurdities. This one really isn't. I do like the four headlights. So um, abroad you got the, uh, the covered headlights here in the US. We of course had the sealed beams. So this one has the high and the low beam in white and then the fog in silver. I'm pretty sure that was factory. Someone has upgraded these to the H4 headlights at one point in its life. Big old chrome bumpers along the front. Then down the side, of course, some chrome rub strips with some rubbers, which are great for if people open your door into uh, your car. And then the wheels, small wheels, 195.70 R14, but a big chunky sidewall, 14 inch wheels. These ones are in pretty good shape. They probably could be refinished uh, to really make them pop. Um, and that brings me to the suspension. So these had fully independent suspension and they are road crushing warriors in terms of ride quality. Uh, you see these throughout Africa, throughout the Middle East, um, throughout Eastern Europe, driving over some of the roughest roads known to man. And they just take it and take it and take it because these cars are super well made. Uh, best part of these and a good example of that, the door close, oh, just phenomenal. I'm really gonna miss that when I sell this car. Um, but of course, this is a four door. They did sell them in coupes and then the station wagons are super desirable. And this one is finished in white. As you can see, I'm not really sure if it's been repainted. There's a chance it may have been, but as far as I can tell, very minimal rust. Uh, there are two spots of rust. The first one is over here. 
by the diesel badge. You can kind of see relative to my finger, it's poking through where the, uh, the, the trim meets the trunk. And then the other rust case, if you want to make your way down here, is by the front apron. You can see it's starting to poke through um, where the body meets the front apron. But as far as I can tell, I think that's pretty much it. There are some smaller paint perfections, like uh, there's some cracking going on in the paint down here, but um, or maybe grazing would be a better word. Uh, but for the most part, it really does shine up well, even all these years later. Uh, all the glass is perfect. All the lights work. Of course, these did have a big chunky trunk, which I'm now realizing is full of stuff. <laughs> I have to clear all that out. But you can see uh, this has the original carpet and the little cardboard liner, and there's no rust to be found throughout here either. So from a, a body and chassis standpoint, I really do think it's pretty solid. I'm not trying to hide anything, but it is really good. The power antenna doesn't work. So it's one of the few things that doesn't work on the car. But let's take a peek on the inside and see what these cars have to offer uh, in terms of luxury features. So these seats are phenomenal. These are made out of a material called MB Tex, which I describe as a military grade vinyl. Genuinely, you see these cars with two, three, four hundred thousand miles and the seats will still and oftentimes look perfect as they do on this car. Really have held up well over the years. No rips and tears that I can find at least. And yeah, just, just phenomenal uh, condition. Got the armrest here in the middle. This does fold up like that. And the dashboard is in pretty good shape too. So uh, there is a little crack up here kind of by the gauge cluster. I don't know if you can see that case. But apart from that, uh, a lot of these cars have really kind of torn up dashes and that kind of thing. And this one is in good shape. There is some cracking down here in the wood, which is worth noting. I haven't bothered to fix it because it just doesn't bug me too much. But even like the steering wheel is held up well. So 150,542 indicated miles right now. Um, and oftentimes uh, the, the odometer will actually stop working on these cars and the, the, the mileage is really unknown. I don't think it ha that this one has, I think it's pretty accurate. And you can tell because like the steering wheel still has all its little ribs and bumps which tend to go bad after a long period of time. All right, I suppose we'll go for a quick drive and then you'll really see why these cars are some of the very best in the world. So glow plugs work, uh, I think very well. It's about 40, 35, 40 degrees out here today. And um, it started up on the first glow when I pulled it out of storage this morning. God, the sense of quality that you get in these old Mercedes is just unrivaled by any other automobile in the industry. It really is great. And there's a lot of cool kind of like uh, little design elements. So for example, the sunroof control, it glides open completely silently because the motor is in the trunk. Um, and talk about like ultimate noise vibration and harshness reduction. You can't hear it open and close at all. How insanely cool is that? So I do have a terrible aftermarket radio in here. Luckily, when the previous owner installed this, he also kept the original radio. So that'll be included with the sale. And now we embark on our 123 ride. And this is just such a cool experience driving these cars because even 40 years later they are built like absolute military bunkers it is incredible how solid they are you can hit bumps and speed humps and stuff at way too fast and you just they just take it i mean they don't rattle or clank or you know show any signs of being upset they just cruise along. Now, uh, one of the uh, kind of interesting things about these cars is a lot of stuff is vacuum operated, such as like the door locks. Um, I've sunk quite a bit of money into this vacuum system, about $1,500, and it's most of the way there. Every now and then the door locks do move slowly, and the cruise control is also on vacuum, and it can be intermittent. Um, and then I put a ton of money into making sure that the transmission would shift well too because I had a first gear that was way too firm. I think it's pretty good. Every now and then it will occasionally like clunk or flare, but for the most part you can drive this car along and not think about what the transmission's doing. All the gauges work, including the tack. I did have to get the tack fixed. I also had to get the air conditioning fixed because it was kaput when I uh, bought it and I have a new air conditioning climate panel in there as well. So the heat and the AC all work well, but let's go ahead and see what the power is like in the 123 Benz. Okay, you ready? I'm gonna straighten out and then floor it. That should be first gear. <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> and then all the power in a second. <laughs> it's, it's actually pretty good. 
when you really get your foot into it. Um, I did have the valves adjusted on this car uh, because I, I just don't want my cars to smoke or roll coal when you accelerate. And the only time that this car will smoke a little bit is at full throttle like that. But it's one of the most special things about these old Benzes are the noise because they just like they howl when you get into the higher RPMs. The turbo really hits hard. And then, you know, you're not, you're not gonna be winning any stop like Grand Prix, I'll put it to you that way, but it is more than adequate to uh, keep up and even pass traffic. So we'll show you one more time. The acceleration, that's 10 miles an hour, full throttle, 20, 25, 30, 4,000 RPM into third that was nearly 5,000 rpm this engine revs to and it doesn't make any weird noises it just pulls and this is where these cars are perfect 40 mile an hour steady state put your head back on the overly bolstered headrest and just drive now the reason i think that these cars are some of the best in the world is because they're not particularly quick they don't handle all that well um they were safe for their era but not super safe by today's standards but they just last forever in a continuous state of refinement. Um, and you can see these cars totally clapped with half a million miles. And yes, stuff will break, like the door locks will fail and the, uh, I don't know, every little piece of electronics will start to go awry, but they will always get you to your destination in a surprising amount of comfort and refinement. And that's why I love this car. So if you're interested in bidding, check out the link in the description below. It'll be ending. Um, I think next Thursday, I want to say, let me get the exact date for you. Uh, yeah, the 21st of October, 2021. And you can be the owner of my baby. I'm really sad to see this car go. And I know this is going to be one where I'm going to regret it in <laughs> 20 years when they're super valuable. Um, but I will deal with that regret in 20 years and move on to some new and greater adventures. Guys, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for watching the series. It's been pretty popular, surprised by how many people are interested in this car. And we'll see you on the flip.